Uh, welcome to the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. It is race day for the sixth annual Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. Paddles Up is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Each year, dragon boats cruise into the Lake Bemidji shoreline. Tourists and locals alike swarm Bemidji's waterfront and downtown shops, all for the annual Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. 2011 marked the sixth year this cultural celebration has been a growing attraction in downtown Bemidji. The annual festival is held on the first Saturday each August. You know, a lot of people don't realize what it takes to get the boats here and the transportation fees and the language villages for like the, the dances and the drums and you know, all that, the little special touches that make this festival so unique. The Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival certainly couldn't happen without the help of a, a ton of people. Um, it's a community-wide effort, literally, from the businesses that help fiscally sponsor the event, individual volunteers that help in a variety of capacities, to the city of Bemidji that allows us, obviously, to use the waterfront for the weekend. It's just an incredible team effort, and it just goes to show, I think, what kind of a community and, and region this is. To get together, first of all, not knowing what in the world the Dragon Boat Festival is, and then to grow with the festival over the years to, to make it what it is today. It, it just speaks to, I think, what a great place Bemidji is. The Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival started in 2006, and it really was a result of us being aware of what happened in Duluth. They have a nice festival in Duluth called the Lake Superior Dragon Boat Festival. And like this one, that festival is also run by local rotary clubs. So it's with the lo local Rotary Club influence that we had been over there, seeing their festival, and thought, you know what, we, we have such a spectacular venue here, a very supportive com community and a great local Rotary Clubs, a great partnership with the Chamber. There's just a lot of reasons that we thought this will work out great here. Great White North, a Toronto-based company specializing in race production, has been a main partner of the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival since its inception. Bemidji is one of many races in North America coordinated by the company. The boats are delivered by truck, unloaded by crane, and released into the waters of Lake Bemidji. The Rotary volunteers and the Chamber of Volunteers and everybody takes care of the festival part of what goes on here. But Great White North really oversees the race specific part because they're the experts. I'm here to go over some of the procedures for tomorrow, um, some of the safety issues, the race schedule, uh, how the progressions work and that sort of thing. Um, as well, our starter is Catherine. She will go over the start commands that you're going to hear on the start line so you know what to expect tomorrow, okay? Uh, our biggest concern is your safety, okay? So I'm gonna go over some safety issues. In terms of the racing, everyone gets two races, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. You should know the times of your races. While I'm talking about timing, we will try to stick to the schedule tomorrow. I know there were some concerns last year that we went ahead of schedule, but also be aware that if the weather is taking a turn for the worse, and I understand it's iffy for tomorrow, that if there's impending th storms in the area, we will, if we can, move quicker to try and get everybody to races as you were promised, okay? Great White North is an essential part of race day. They bring the equipment, set the course, start and officiate the races, and ensure the safety of participants while on the water. They strike a nice balance between being hardcore race officials, all about getting everything exactly right, with recognizing that this is all about fun too. And we have a lot of people who haven't done this before, and so they're doing their best and they're having a good time. And so they, in the spirit of that, um, still do a nice job of, of, of running our race for us. In terms, uh, yes, the drummer doesn't count as one of the paddlers, so that if the drummer's female, you still need eight female paddlers, okay? The very first Lake Bemidji Dragon Bowl Festival back in 2006 had 36 teams. Um, and since then, we've grown every year. The biggest leap was from year one to year two, and I think a lot of that is because no one knew what a dragon boat was and was a little leery of maybe participating, but they came down to watch that first year, and a lot of people from there on out said, I want to do that. That looks like a lot of fun. 
no experience necessary, all the equipment is provided, and they learn that the first year. So the second year, I believe we had 60 teams, um, and then in year three, we upped it to 60, I think three or four, um, and year four was a couple more teams, and last year, 67. This year, we've grown, uh, I guess, the second largest increase from year to year. We're up to 77 teams registered for, uh, for this year's festival, so it's been incredible to see, but the biggest year growth was from what year one to year two, because uh, it was took a lot of convincing, I think, to have those 36 teams entered that first year. Not so much convincing from there on out. We were part of the initial Dragon Boat Festival, the 2006, so the very first running of the Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival, and we developed a team by the name of the Woolly Irishman. We did very well that year. Uh, we, we won the very first Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival, and it was a hoot. It got very popular, and we had more people that wanted to be on the Woolly Irishman than we knew what to do with. I mean, we were looking at 35, 45 people that all of a sudden wanted to be Woolly Irishmen. So what we decided to do was have a, a Woolly Irishman and a Friends of the Woolly Irishman team. And the idea was quite simple, that we would have a very competitive group and that we would have more of our social group. Over the winter, talking with some of my skiing friends and obviously some of my canoe marathon acquaintances, we decided that what we would like to do is put together a team purely made up of, of paddlers. Or if not just paddlers, they would be skiers and cyclists and triathletes, just people that we knew that had a, a passion to to work hard and play hard. And we developed a team called the Hydra Heads. We chose Hydra Heads because Hydra Heads in Greek mythology is a multi-headed dragon. And it kind of went really well with the festival. And we thought, you know, you cut the head off of one dragon, it's gonna grow, grow two more heads. And so uh, that was kind of our whole mantra. We were gonna be uh, the multi-headed dragon. We're, we're a very cohesive unit once we get going. And I think that's the biggest part of the strategy of this thing is, is to have a cohesive unit. The Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival attracts a huge crowd. Thousands of onlookers cover the Lake Bemidji waterfront and the teams are very diverse. Some boats are made up of local businesses, members from various paddling associations, family teams, and even some traveling teams. Uh, the A-Team was basically formed for this festival. We just a group of paddlers from the Manitoba Paddling Association. Uh, we tried to come up with a creative name that would represent or, or let people know where we're from. And uh, we came up with the A-Team based on the movie, uh, the A-Team, <laughs> with the uh, Canadian spinning on it. Being on a boat at the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival is quite interesting. It depends on whether you're a paddler or a drummer, and I've been fortunate to serve in both capacities. Um, when you're the drummer, or as I like to call it, the yeller, you sit in uh, the very front of the boat, up above everybody else, and it's your job to keep everybody in sync. And that's normally um, with a cadence of numbers. And then, of course, you would speed up the pace as you uh, went down the course to try to get the boat moving faster, and then the final push for the finish line. Being a drummer is certainly different than being a paddler when you're on a dragon boat. You're up above everything and you can look around and know where you're at. If you're a paddler on a dragon boat, that is uh, ultra intense. You're concentrating on the two people at the front of the boat. They're kind of the lead paddlers and they're the one who set the pace and you want to time your paddle to the, the front two rowers and when their paddle goes in the water, that's when your paddle is supposed to go in the water and that leads to the synchronicity uh, which is needed to get the boat down the race course as fast as possible. And you really are, are unaware of your environment. You don't know how far you are down the course. Um, you don't have time to turn, look around, see who's next to you um, as far as the other racers or look at the crowd on, in, in the amphitheater. You're concentrated again on those front two paddlers and when their paddle goes into the water, yours has to go into the water. And that's really what you're concentrated on. And uh, it seems like forever when you're in the boat, it's taking forever to get down the race course, but in reality, it's between two and two minutes, 45 seconds, and that's it, and you're done. It's exhilarating when you get done, but it's a lot of effort uh, going down the race course, and you have to put everything into it uh, all two, two and a half minutes, and uh, it's just totally different. You have to be on the boat to completely understand it. Each team approaches practice differently. All teams get a chance to paddle twice during the week of practices. This allows paddlers to get a feel for the boat and to work on their timing with the drummer. Team Hydra Head opted to practice closer to race day. There's different ways to approach that, you know, so we paddle kind of easy yesterday just to get rhythm down and to work with the crew. Timing, 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 that's so important in this. And then today, 
will be a much more aggressive day. You know, we'll work on our start, we'll work on our tempo, and then tomorrow we race. If there's one thing that can make or break a team in this event, it has to do with their staying in rhythm with each other. My longtime drummer could not be here. And the drummer is a very interesting position. Their enthusiasm, their voice, uh, their control of the boat, it just doesn't happen overnight. And, and you gotta find a certain person that has that kind of characteristics and qualities. We have a new woman this year, and it was a pretty good run last night, you know, but that'll be our focus today, to get her to, to work with this crew, because they can accidentally change our tempo, you know, without even knowing it. You know, they can get excited. The drummer is a key component. It's their voice and drumming that keeps the paddlers in sync and on pace. Proper paddling technique is also vital. It's all about power, not speed. So we have to go all the way out to the front, the hip in front of you. There's a your person right in front of you is going to be right there, so you're going to hit their hip and to your hip. That's it. Just right here, hip to hip, hip to hip. And as we start practicing, we're going to want to keep this up in the air. We don't do this. Okay, like a canoe. Just dragging both well, the best way to paddle is we try and use a uh, C1 uh, style or high kneel style in a, from a canoe where you engage uh, your core of your body and your legs and try and keep your arms locked, uh, starting out with an A-frame and really planting the paddle and driving back with your body as opposed to using your arms to paddle. You come up, rotate your body, uh, both arms straight, and you create an A pattern. We're one side of the A, other side of the A, and then your the arm of the A is across. Plant your paddle, drive down with both arms, keeping sitting up, and then exiting the water and returning forward. And every time when you do that, after you plant the paddle and come through, you're really trying to have your body, your core of your body and your legs create the power as opposed to the arms. It takes reaching with this shoulder and this lower hand to turn my body and my chest to the center of the boat, okay? To get it in, hands stack, and it's a sit-up, and get back out. We try not to look at the paddle in front of us. We do everything we can to not look at the paddle in front of us. If I'm paddling here, I look at Mark Morrissey. Mark is my key man. All right, when Mark's hand is up in the air, my hand's up in the air. I'm in sync with Mark. So it's really all about the fun involved around the racing, and it's really not that difficult. I think people, once they get in a boat and paddle, understand that while it is some physical work required, um, it's really not that difficult, and it only lasts a short period of time. So anybody 14 years of age or older can do it, and uh, I'd encourage anybody to give it a try. I think you'll find it a very worthwhile experience. Well, I'm Hope Hickman, and I turned 14 today, and it's really exciting because for the Dragon Boat, you have to be 14 years old on your first practice day, and that would be today, so it's really exciting. You don't think it looks that difficult in the when you're watching people, but it really takes a lot of strength. You have to go a longer distance than you think, so just keep rowing, keep rowing. The most exciting is when you're out there, you're getting ready to go, and then it's just like, you're there and you're doing it and then you finish and you're like, oh my gosh, this was so fun. I want to do it again. A big component of the, the festival and a successful race is who's driving these boats. And for us, we're very fortunate to have a group that stepped up to learn how to do that. Um, it's the Buena Vista Ski Patrol. Let's go, are you ready? Okay, on the boat, let's go this way. So we know who's in the center, they load first. Don't get pushy, don't get pushy. We don't want to lose yeah. And so they are our steers people, as they're called. 
and it's a, a large undertaking for them, but it turns out to be a very good fundraiser and a fabulous partnership. We have three simple rules. Rule number one is don't lose your steersman. Okay. Rule number two is remember rule number one. And rule number three, if you lose your paddle, just jump out your dead weight. So they dove in. When we first talked about this festival and this idea, we thought, really, we need some local talent, some people that are very engaged and willing to um, do that job, very key job of steering these 40-foot-long boats down the water, right, with 20-some people in them. Okay, I want right side only the back paddle. Right side only, back paddle. Right side only. So the Buena Vista Ski Patrol, on their own accord, they, they um, went to Duluth. They met with the folks at the Duluth Festival that do the same function there. So are you ready to start counting? I guess so. We'll just do a nice, easy start. We'll just take it away. We're not going to do a practice start, but I'll say attention, sit up, paddles up, and then you say take it away, and that's your one. Okay, okay so attention, sit up, paddles up. Let it ride. Buena Vista Ski Patrol folks went over there, got trained on uh, multiple occasions, and then they came back and they've, they've trained other uh, folks in their group. So they have a, a large, you know, 20 to 30 people with the Ski Patrol that are actively out here in some way, whether they're steering or organizing. Um, they're a very big part. And of course, they're doing the practices all week long. They're doing the races all day Saturday and a lot of other things. So, but I think they really enjoy it. They're very good at it. They're great with the people uh, that they work with, you know, those paddlers and, and drummers that are learning the ropes. They do a very good job. So are you ready to do a practice start? Okay, okay practice start. It's going to be the same thing, but I'm going to say stabilize the boat, and then I'm going to say horn, and that's one. Okay, and when I say attention, sit up, your hip, your outside hip is right up tight against the outside of the boat, and when your paddle goes up, you want that as straight up and down as you can. When it goes in the water, you want it right at the person's hip in front of you. And then that, when the horn goes, I'll, I'm going to say horn, that's one, and we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Tension. Sit up. Paddles up. Hold the boat. Horn! Let it ride. Let it ride. Okay, tension, paddles up, stabilize the boat. I've always wanted to just wait and see what everybody does. Okay, stabilize the boat, horn! We're taking on a little water, hope it's not too much. We sink. I hope you're there to pull us out. Keep smiling and wave. Uh, glad you're here, and we've got uh, some great weather here uh, this afternoon. Hopefully uh, that will hold for us as we get ready for the parade of teams and the opening ceremonies tonight. Again, everybody, we'd like to welcome you to the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. As you've noticed, uh, it's gotten a little bit darker, so we just want to kind of give a heads up that uh, it does look like uh, rain is imminent. We hope that it passes. It does look like just a uh, short cluster of rain so that the uh, opening ceremonies may be able to uh, go on as scheduled. So we'll definitely obviously keep you posted as, uh, as we go along here uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Just wanted to give you the heads up so you can uh, prepare a little bit in advance. Stay tuned for uh, further announcements. Thank you.
encountered a little bit of weather there. Uh, we haven't seen that too many times in the history of the Dragon Boat Festival, that's for sure, but sustained winds at 50, 60 miles an hour kind of wreaked a little havoc. So we're, uh, we're waiting for the rain to clear. It looks like we got about another 15 minutes and then the cleanup will begin in earnest. Our planning committee running out in the midst uh, of those 60 mile an hour winds and the downpour to save our kids tent, which had uh, been lifted off its moorings and thrown about 70 yards into the lake. And they went into the lake after it. I think uh, most of the teams are resilient as is the Dragon Boat Festival as a whole. You have to be kind of a resilient person to partake in this kind of a festival. And everybody knows you can't control the weather. So I think, uh, you know, we'll rise above it. We see a little bit less attendance tonight. We're hoping to still have the parade of teams, which is such a, a wonderful part of this event. But uh, obviously a little dampered by the weather. We're not sure how many teams are going to be able to participate. But we'll play it by ear and do what we can to make this thing go. There's been a lot of weather damage. Uh, the, the team villages are kind of squashed, but you know everybody kind of just picks it right back up and they rebuild. And and I think it's just it's going to be a great festival no matter what. So. And then when we looked at each other, we realized we were all the littlest women in the tent, so we better lower it down. The wind got stronger and stronger. And there were things flying from the other tents, like stars flying and hitting us and that tent, body parts. <laughs> that tent next door came and snapped against the leg of our tent and we could tell that it was totally broken. So then the hail came and we were just hanging from the inside, holding it, literally holding down the fort because now we had hail and so we knew that after hail the sun will come out so we were pretty much almost done and we were just glad we were all still together and all the four corners stayed on so. she was a big storm she was a really big storm <laughs> oh yeah we were here we were here it was a, it was a nasty one it was a nasty one there was there was dime size hail dime size hail canopies were blowing Smacking against trees and telephone poles. It was it was it was nasty. We are with the water soaked nerds and we're living up to that reputation right now because it is water soaked right now. We are water soaked. We were lucky to survive. We were. It was it was touch and go there for a while. It really was. According to Chinese legend, the story of the dragon boat's origin began with a man named Chu Yuan. He was a court official and a poet, unhappy with an irresponsible king. After criticizing the king, he was exiled, but in protest he jumped into the river and drowned himself. The Chinese people regarded Chu Yuan with great love, so they raced in dragon boats to recover his body, throwing rice into the river to prevent the fish from feeding on his remains. To this day, Chu Yuan's story is celebrated worldwide in the form of dragon boat races. My name's Dan Hamilton. I am the dean of Baltse German Language Villages. German language program for young Americans, the immersion program, German language and culture just outside Bemidji. We're part of the Concordia language villages. There's 15 different languages. Kids from all over the United States come to this part of Minnesota every summer. And we're participating in the Dragon Boat Festival. Our Chinese village is leading the parade with its own dragon. Uh, our Japanese village is doing the Japanese drumming as part of the ceremony. And the German village is the Dragon Boat team. And we're gonna do well. The dragon boat races are originally from China, and so it's inherently a cultural festival, a cross-cultural encounter. Our Chinese village has been the team here for the last few years, and they're leading the parade with their own dragon. If you go to China, the dragon is a big symbol in many parades and many sort of festivals, and the Chinese village has for many, many years made their own dragon, and so whenever they come to our festivals, they always bring along their dragon, uh, which makes its way, weaves its way along the path. Uh, but this year, the German village is the team uh, out piloting the boat and uh, racing for the whole villages. But it's the cultural aspect that attracts us to this uh, festival. Uh, people from all over North America, as I understand, coming here, 10 scores and scores of teams. Uh, we want our young people to be right in the middle of that. 
Right, Concordia Language Villages is uh, North America's premier immersion program in foreign language for young Americans, although there's also family uh, camps and even day camps for kids who come out and they live in another world of a different language. And it's a great challenge for kids to simply get beyond their own daily experience and explore more about themselves in the world. It's a great partnership with the town of Bemidji and with the Dragon Boat Festival organizers and our own cultural program. What better way to experience Northern Minnesota than through this cross-cultural exchange? Kids come from all over North America to participate in our language villages, and here's an opportunity to step just a, one step beyond our village and come to this festival. The dragon leads the parade, followed by the teams as they march through the team village down to the waterfront where they are announced to the crowd. Another one of our Media Cup teams. Who are you? Who are you? Radio Waves, NPR Radio Waves. Minnesota Public Radio, NPR Radio Waves. You still got to go in one of those Media Cups. We're waiting on that, right? That's what we're waiting on, too. This is the year, I think. This is the year, 2011. Good luck tomorrow, NPR Radio Waves. All right. The opening ceremony begins with a special cultural presentation performed by students of Concordia Language Villages. The opening ceremony concludes with the waking of the dragon. Well, it's time to get this party started. The 6th Annual Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival gets officially started with the waking of the dragon, and here to do that is the mayor of the city of Bemidji, Dave Larson. Thank you, and thank you all for coming to this beautiful city. It's my privilege to wake the dragon, but I want to first of all thank every organization, every person that put so much work into this event. It's going to be a great time. The weather is going to be perfect. I assure you of that. And uh, now we are going to wake the dragon. Let's get a, a round of applause going here for the waking of the dragon. Thank you, Mayor. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming down and helping us wake the dragon. Because of the festival's ties with Concordia language villages, the festival has an authentic international flair to it. We were so happy to see the ceremony, the uh -huh. mayor, you know, that it's really, really authentic. Yeah, everything's very authentic and we are very impressed. So it's not just a popular dragon boat race. It also has its deep root in Chinese history and Chinese cultures. And the story about dragon is dragons are supposed to bring the rain. So it fits perfectly with the weather here at Bemidji today and maybe tomorrow. After the rain, it will be another beautiful day. I think yeah. that's more, you know, meaningful for the, yeah. Has a really, events. really special meaning. Right. Good fortune and good luck. Yeah, good fortune. For the whole event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With this kind of weather. See, during the ceremony, it was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Cambodia Life Villages is the best example for promoting global education and the cultural understanding. Yeah. But the Bemidji, you know, is also the good representation of this. Yeah. It's, it's not limited to the language villages, it's the whole town, it's the whole city. area. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're from China and it's, uh, it's our honor to uh, know they have such a festival in such a beautiful city. So. Very yeah. global perspective, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. very impressive. Mm -hmm. The first race tomorrow is at 8.15 a.m. And again, thank you so much for persevering through the weather tonight. And uh, we welcome you to the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival, and we wish you all great luck tomorrow. Thank you for coming out. Good luck tomorrow, everybody. Paddles up. Welcome to the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. It is race day for the sixth annual Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. We've got a great start, and I know that you do start well. And after that, it's going to be a matter of sucking it up when it burns. It's working, so it's burning harder. It's two minutes out of your life. You can do it. All right. Fire! 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 
And to the finish line they come. It looks like it's going to be the Paddledings and the Erpeldig family holding on to win heat one. Followed by the Firewalls, the Point of Sailors, and the Shuck family in your first race. And we are officially underway here at the uh, Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. Who's ever ahead of the Dragon comes first, wins the heat, obviously. And it's a combination of your two times that determines uh, where you rank and if you will be in the uh, gold, silver, or bronze championship. Top four teams with the lowest combined times will be in the gold division final. Silver and bronze division finalists are determined by combined times in a ranking system and are raced at the end of the day. The cups are given to organizations that represent education, banking, health, media, civic, and contractors. The cup winners are determined by the top time of the first race of the day in each division. Other awards that are given include Best Team Appearance, Best Team Village, and the Best Team Name. The team from Great River Dentistry has taken home the Best Team Name title in the past. Well, the first year of the Dragon Boat Festival, we were out of town that year, so we have been involved every year since then. And we are with Great River Dentistry, this chicken ship. Well, we came up with the name because we, were to, we knew that we needed to come up with a look. We'd heard so many stories from people in the past, and so we were flipping through a catalog, and we found these great chicken hats. And so Doug said, well, we could be the chicken ship, and so that's... That's how it came about. And the inspiration from that actually came from Kim's dad, who gave us a pontoon boat that he referred to as the chicken ship. Dentistry sometimes refers to catering to cowards, so we thought we'd twist that a little bit and cater to chickens. I think it's so fun to have just this variety of people come through on your team. You know, our team has been different every year, which is so fun. So people that maybe never would have had a chance have paddled with us, and it's, it's just so such a fun opportunity to try to work together. We, we do have many different people who come back to roost with us each year. Probably the, the festival is to see different groups' inspiration, the way they design their villages, kind of the, the fun that they have, and it is great camaraderie. We enjoy it very much. Looks like are in the staging area. Those three teams are going to be... While Team Chicken Ship has claimed the prize for best team name, the Willie Irishmen strive to maintain their excellence. Before the first race, team captains discuss strategies that have served them well in past festivals. When it's start time, they want our paddles in the water. That means one inch in the water. You're sitting at your person's hip, their thigh in front of you, one inch in the, in the water to hold the boat. It's going to be racers, all, right, all right, hold your spots, right hold your position. Right now, so. Are racers yeah. ready? And then they're going to, the next yep. thing you hear is the air horn. Yep. There's not any paddles, there's nothing. It's just hold, 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 go. It can come fast. During those first 10, very important to watch Andra and Char, because what happens, you get your adrenaline going and you're going to want to do this. And it's so important, those first 10, to just keep it nice in rhythm and get us up on plane. So once we get up on plane, we'll be listening to you, we'll be watching Andra and Char, keep it going. As we get towards the end, we've talked about powering up. Powering up does not change our cadence. It changes how deep the paddle goes in the water. It makes it harder, so you're reaching farther and you're pulling. You're getting that deep in the water and you're pulling. Right now, we're just trying to get everybody uh, all together, get them all thinking on the same lines, calm and collect, go out there and keep the same game plan that we've had for the week of practice. First race is usually always the best race, and this morning, the weather conditions, I think it'll definitely be the best race of the day. The uh, weather this afternoon is supposed to get a little bit more windy, so it'll make things a little more difficult. So, first race should be good. We got uh, team number, uh, race number 11. One of the things I'm most proud of is the impact that this festival is able to have on the community 
And it does that in a number of ways. Uh, the most obvious way is that you have the Bemidji Rotary Club, who does a lot of good things within our community in the region and internationally. And you have the Bemidji Chamber of Commerce and their work to support lo the local business community. So at the surface, you have two great organizations, nonprofits that are working very hard and benefit by this festival in what they can do for the community um, all year round. But what maybe isn't so obvious is there is a whole number of groups that we enlist their help and they volunteer and we will provide a donation to these groups to help us put this festival on. So you, you know, we had the ski patrol we talked about who are our skiers people. It's a great fundraiser for them. We have dance groups and we have you know, boy scouts and we have sporting clubs and you know, many, many groups within the community that ultimately will financially benefit through our, our donations to them. Um, but really provide us a, a valuable service and it's only because we have all these groups that collectively we can put this on. Around the world, a common partnership among Dragon Boat Festivals is with various cancer societies. In 2011, the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival partnered with the Beltrami County Relay for Life team to carry on that tradition. Again, a new partnership this year with the Beltrami County Relay for Life and this, I believe, is their survivor team, correct? Goals to survive oars. Survive oars from the Beltrami County Relay for Life. So everybody on the boat tomorrow will be a cancer survivor. That's right. That is awesome. Let's hear it for the Beltrami County Relay for Life team. We are here to help all the survivors celebrate more birthdays. That's why we have the cupcakes. We got a lot of people donated cupcakes for us to give to the survivors and anyone else that wants them. So we're just out here to have fun and promote some awareness for cancer. And we have a team that raced this morning. They're gonna race again this afternoon. They're all survivors from our county here at Beltrami County. There are also several teams made up of only cancer survivors who travel to Dragon Boat Festivals throughout the region. Well, our team is a breast cancer survivor dragon boat team. Uh, we were formed in 1998, uh, soon after a Canadian researcher in Vancouver found that dragon boating was a very safe sport for women who had had breast cancer, that it was very good treatment for implications of surgery uh, that many breast cancer survivors go through. Our team was formed in 1998 and we've been paddling since then. And uh, there are breast cancer survivor dragon boat teams all over uh, the U.S., Canada, and the rest of the world. There have been a number of uh, international festivals where uh, women from, uh, from Europe, from Asia, and from the U.S. and Canada get together uh, and compete with each other. Well, our team does four festivals in a year. We have uh, two in Manitoba, and uh, we travel for two. This is one of the ones that we've traveled to. This is our first year in Bemidji but we're really hoping to come back. We've really enjoyed it, and we have felt very welcome here. We want to really show that there is life after breast cancer, and uh, we do that by living, trying to live a healthy life and a supportive life together. The rose ceremony is one of our symbolic gestures uh, to remember all women that have been affected by breast cancer, that is the pink rose, and then we do carry a white rose uh, for um, our team members that have lost the battle to breast cancer. So it is a, a sort of a centering experience uh, to link us to our mission and why we are here together. For Kimo Sappy, the most important part of the competition is the rose ceremony. Each member of the team has carried a rose with them as a tribute to those who have lost their own race to breast cancer and as a promise to keep on paddling until the race for a cure is won. Among the pink roses, there is one white one. This is a special tribute to a team member who began a different journey this year. The prostate paddlers and survivors join Kimo Sappy in this rose ceremony. They each have a yellow rose symbolizing the continued fight against cancer and effort to raise cancer awareness and prevention. All four teams invite all spectators to participate in this memorial ceremony with a moment of silence. Thank you.
That concludes the morning session of the 6th Annual Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. We're going to take a quick break for lunch. Please make sure to uh, check the revised race schedule on the scoreboard. Again, we're starting early at 12.30. We're shortening the course, and we'll have races every nine minutes, so it's going to be pretty rapid fire as fast as we can make it. Teams compete in two races. One race is completed during the morning session, while the other is completed in the afternoon. The combined times qualify them for gold, silver, and bronze division finals at the end of the day. The youngest paddler at the Dragon Boat Festival found out that paddling was a lot harder than watching from the shoreline. When you're just watching, you don't think it's as hard. You're just like... Oh, they're so close, just go a little bit faster. Only when you're actually in the boat, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't go any faster. How am I gonna do this? It was amazing. It was like the longest minute of my life or two minutes. It's harder than you think. Like when you're out there paddling, you're just like, keep going, keep going, keep going. And like, you have to keep your head up so you stay in sync with everybody else. And that's like one of the biggest keys to stay in sync with the rest of your group. The lane closest to you, lane number one, the Moto Dragons get hooked for life in lane number two, the Fabro Caters and Grimes Realty Blazing Paddles. They got that dragon tail wind working for him here this morning. Four stars, and it is going to be Get Hooked for Life taking the heat. Second place is going to be close. Wow, that's the closest race of the day so far. Teams gain valuable knowledge from their morning race session that helps to make adjustments for the second race of the day. Our time was uh, 210 something, 210 28, I believe. Um, we, were, we were real happy with the start and in the first half of the race we were running pretty smooth, got out of the water fast, running smooth. And when we tried to power up towards the end we kind of got out of sync a little bit, got out of rhythm, which I think slowed us down a bit. But overall we were, we were very fortunate uh, to turn in that time, which at the time was the fastest of the day. Boat number four, it's the Wooly Irishman. And making the turn. Yeah, we have some, some things we're going to do different. I think we're going to, instead of powering up at the end, seeing that it's a shorter race, the second race, we're just going to continue uh, at a little bit higher pace rhythm the whole way. We, we did what we wanted to do. We wanted to get off to a good start. We had a good start and uh, just took it from there like practice. Our goal right now is just to get in the finals. I mean, there's some good teams here. There are some very good teams here, and, and we're, we're fortunate enough to have a, quite a good time in the first, our first round. So. There's just such high energy throughout the day, from beginning to end. There really isn't a waning, oh, this is getting tiring, or oh, look at everybody there. Everybody's just exhausted and ready to go home. Uh, the energy level is there consistently throughout the day, and of course it builds up until that uh, gold finals race at the end of the day where it's just palpable and the crowd's into it. Obviously the teams that are in that final race are into it. Uh, it it's, it's just high energy all day. So by far, right now, in this moment, this today is our most exciting time, I think. Yeah, coming into the finals, and we're really close. The A team and Hydra Heads are very similar in ability, so it'll be very fun to see what happens. The Hydra Heads were the only local team vying for the gold championship as they faced only Canadian foes in the final race. The Prostate Paddlers, the River City Dragons, and their rival, the A-Team.
Stranglers as they come to the first ten of the week. The River City Dragons. And the Angels make the first way behind them, the Hydra Hats. One, two, and three, neck and neck as they make it through the first ten of the week. Looking to make it to the next ten of the week. They're all tied up in the front. They share the lead. The River City Dragons in lane one. The A team in lane two, the Hydra Hats in lane three. And they end up having a fall back. They end up having a fall back. Right now, the River City Dragons bringing them up. He was the two and first. And they'll head for the finish line. Here they come with Tara from Shore and Louis Ravenstein. All four teams go to next as they come down here. Tara and Shore. This is for a championship Sunday right here. Four teams in the hunt. And Luther City Dragons. Come on out, Dragon! Wow! Wow! What a race! That is Dragon Boat Racing at its best right there. And here they come back to shore. In boat number one, it's your River City Dragon! The four teams were separated by only 53 hundredths of a second in the final race. Yet, in the end, it was the River City Dragons that came up victorious. I think I'm going to stick them all for the closing award ceremony. And we hand out all the hardware here shortly. We'll wait for all the teams to get through the, uh... the 2011 Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival was certainly a success. Those in attendance would not let the Friday evening storm dampen their spirits. Participants' dedication was rewarded by a fun-filled day of exciting races that people have come to expect from the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. We have such a nice waterfront here. This could be something really big um, for our downtown community and tied into some other events here. And uh, convince enough people, enough sponsors to give it a try here six years ago. And it's just really taken off since then. It's an incredible event. It is very unique to have so many people in one location getting, I mean, it's everybody, there's not a bad comment about the event. From start to finish, everybody enjoys it, and it's a great event for town, and hopefully it'll go for many, many years.
We come here to have a good time and compete. Competition is good. Uh, the better the competition, the more fun it is. Uh, we go hard, and as long as we race hard and have good competition, we have fun. And the people treat us really well here. I really like this festival because the community comes out so well and puts out all these tents, and they make the place, uh, you can see there's just a huge community involvement. And they really welcome, uh, they make us feel welcome as well. Wonderful time. Good chance for people to get together. The schools for a good cause. It's a lot of fun. It's a great time. Well, I think it's, it's a nice thing for family uh, participation and family orientation and meeting all your friends on here, plus other people. So it's a wonderful thing for the community. I just hope this uh, Dragon Boat Festival continues. It's a, I think it's a lot of fun for a lot of people. I, and I think what happens, Steve, there are people that do this and then they look beyond this and say, maybe I'll try regular canoeing and canoe racing too. Well, I think the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival has really meant a lot to the Bemidji community. From community pride, obviously, to uh, regional-wide awareness of what Bemidji has to offer. And this really showcases this waterfront, which is the crown jewel of our community. And it really utilizes it to the fullest. The Lake Bemidji waterfront was made for the Lake Bemidji Dragon Boat Festival. I think a lot of people take great pride in this, uh, in this festival. Six years ago, a lot of the questions were, what is it? I don't get it. I don't know what a Dragon Boat Festival is. Today it's when is the Dragon Boat Festival. I want to be a part of it and I can't wait for it to get here.
Paddles Up is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.